potential peaceful protest was criminalised. I couldn't quite believe my eyes when I first stumbled across the Twitter post describing the arrest of Graham Smith, who heads up the organisation Republican uh, Republic, and and some of his um, compadres. I've, I've actually got his book in front of me. Someone must have left it in, in the office over the course of the weekend. It is called Abolish the Monarchy, Why We Should and How We Will. Um, so no one could ever accuse him of sitting on the fence. But what struck me most when I first started digging into the reports, and they were sort of, um, uh, what's the word, eyewitness reports. So they were unfolding as as it happened. There, were, uh, there was a, a chap who didn't seem to have much journalistic experience, actually, but he did a cracking job. I think he may have been Dutch or Belgian, and he had a, a microphone with him, and they, they belonged to a sort of transnational Republican grouping. And he just attempted to describe what was going on with a, with a genuine air of wonder. I, I usually reserve observations like this for mornings when plutonium goes missing in Iran or something like that, but it did have the feel of a film. It was as if someone, like a citizen journalist, was trying to convey something remarkable and shocking who had never done it before. Um, but he did a cracking job. He did a very good job. And what he conveyed was uh, the fact that not only were people being arrested, having gone to a van to remove some placards, but that it included the chap who runs Republic, who had been engaging with the police. I heard him interviewed in the course of the week. He'd been engaging with the police over the course of the week, discussing what would and, and would not be happening over the course of the weekend. Um I, I, close conversations is how he's described it. Not going back days, but but going back months. He had he contends that he persuaded them, i.e. the Met, that they had no plans to be disruptive. His colleagues were lawful in what they were doing, and it means that this rather unpleasant. Uh, I mean, it's more than just an episode, isn't it? it I mean, it, it, it got worse later in the day when people were were arrested um, on on suspe- for people who routinely carry rape alarms to give to women who who may be vulnerable were arrested for being in possession of rape alarms, effectively, after a Mail on Sunday front page had suggested that they may be used to spook the horses at at the coronation. Um, seven minutes after ten is the time, and. The, the police are already backtracking. Uh, they, they've they've kind of apologised. They've certainly expressed regret over the arrest of six anti-monarchy protesters. Here is a statement from the Met Commander Karen Findlay, who led the operation on Saturday afternoon. We absolutely understand public concern following the arrests we made this morning. Protest is lawful and it can be disruptive. That's slightly at odds with the tweet that they put out on Friday. If they, hey, hey! That was the last conversation we had on Friday, wasn't it? Because I don't, you showed me the tweet, you sent me the tweet while I was live on air, and like a don, we completely changed course and, and, and ripped up what passes for our running order and dived instead into a conversation about why they had chosen to publish an apparently quite aggressively worded threat to potential protesters. I read that tweet and thought that they were essentially seeking to outlaw disruption. And yet here is the commander who led the operation on Saturday saying, in terms, protest is lawful and it can be disruptive. We have policed numerous protests without intervention in the build-up to the coronation and during it. Our duty is to do so in a proportionate manner in line with relevant legislation. We also have a duty to intervene when protest becomes criminal and may cause serious disruption. See, I, I don't know how much you fancy getting stuck into the semantics of it, but if it's, if it's may cause serious disruption, who's deciding? And how does it become criminal? It's all a bit minority report, isn't it? This depends, she seeks to explain, this depends on the context. And here's the thing, the coronation is a once-in-a-generation event, and that is a key consideration in our assessment. That might be the line we focus on most. A protest involving large numbers has gone ahead today with police knowledge and no intervention. Um, 
he, Graham Smith, has said he doesn't accept the apology and will take legal action after no charges were brought against him. The Met has also confirmed that it used this controversial new law, which we might loosely describe as Braverman's law, to detain the group. It, it, it sort of leaves police with, well, if you were going to pick a point in the last 50 years at which to give members of the Metropolitan Police more discretion over who does and does not get their collar felt, would you have picked this particular moment in our island history, given the recent events, recent revelations, recent disgusting, almost unreadable scandals regarding uh, the, uh, the activities of Metropolitan Police officers, both both criminal and contextual when it comes to WhatsApp groups and disgusting so-called banter that passes between them. Are these the people to whom you would hand unprecedented powers to police potential protests? Sounds like a tongue twister. Unprecedented powers to police potential protests? She sells seashells on the seashore. Thank you. I can't believe I've my muffs in all sorts. I've got a soggy muff now. I'm going to have to deal with that during the uh, first break of the morning. So what do you make of it all? I'd like police officers to tell me how you think this happened. Because Graham Smith talks about being visited at his home by police officers who seemed rather embarrassed. He said, for the record, I won't accept the apology. He got arrested because he planned to protest. There was initially talk about having the means to lock on, but that seems to have uh, been been stepped back from. The, the, the original claim was that the Met had reasonable grounds to believe they possessed items that could be used as lock-on devices. Um, but they later said it was unable to prove intent to use them to lock on and disrupt the event. So I don't know quite what that would mean. Would it mean that they were holding cable ties, presumably, that to, to, to put their placards together? And that could have been construed by the police as evidence that they were planning to cable tie themselves to street furniture or perhaps to, to a bin? Um, I do not know. 11 minutes after 10 is the time. I think we'll probably focus first on the six people who've had their bail cancelled. They've had the original grounds for arrest essentially abandoned um, and it has been confirmed that no further action would be taken. And, and I, want, I want to know... I don't want to say to you how serious is this because I, I, I'm not suggesting that, that some days are too important for what you might describe as democracy, but... It has to be important. If you can't protest against something, you literally can't protest against something, you've been robbed of something incredibly valuable and precious. And it seems to me on this occasion that the police are in possession of powers that are too vague and too uh, political, actually. This is essentially legislation designed so Suella Braverman can stand up and say that she's being almost as horrible to environmental protesters as she is to desperate refugees and I, I, apparently we live in a country where that sort of rhetoric gets applaud, applauded by um, members of the Conservative Party but, but it's too vague and it's too political and it led at the weekend to a moment in which planning to protest peacefully I've got bloody tongue twisters coming out of my ears this morning, planning peaceful protest was criminalised just, just for a few hours Potential peaceful protest was criminalised for a few hours. I don't quite know how that could have happened. You've been arrested for being in possession of an idea.